I'm sorry, but our kid is not gonna be taught to say no thank you when someone's touching him in an unwanted way. He's gonna be taught to say, get your hands off me. And maybe he'll have a British accent when he says it, but maybe he'll say, get your hands off me. <laughs> wow. You really went there with the, That's right. <laughs> the, the Charles Dickens Un British accent. Unhand me, you hooligan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get your hands off me. That's the response. Okay, we're gonna hop into the first story. We've got three of them for you. They're pretty awesome. All right, story number one. Anyone else shocked at some of the decisions your parents made? Last spring, I had a deeply revealing conversation with my mom about some of the trauma I experienced. She confessed that she deliberately undermined my self-esteem. She felt that I was difficult to handle and believed that if my confidence was lower, I'd be more controllable. She intentionally criticized my weight, hygiene, appearance, clothing choices, makeup, friends, and more. I was driven to a point where I considered ending my life due to her words. Learning that it was all deliberate is heart-wrenching. Growing up, I thought she was just being human, that she sometimes lost her temper like anyone might. Parenting is tough and I was a challenging kid. But now as an adult and a parent living in the real world, I can't fathom ever behaving that way. I can't imagine breaking my child's self-worth before even considering therapy. It's incomprehensible to me. Have any of you had similar realizations since becoming parents, even if they're less extreme? Wow. That's a, that's a strong one to start on. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, um, yeah, it is tough. And you know, the thing is, I think what's interesting is, there's always these assumptions. Jude is clapping for this. Jude's clapping. By the he way. likes that Jude, story. This is, yeah, this is not really a story <laughs> they were going to clap for. But uh, yeah, no. There's a. I think there's like this assumption that that parents universally get this. You know, I don't know. There's something in them where they are just automatically doing what's best for the child that this whole idea of we're going to do what's best for the child is just understood. And it really isn't understood. And this is, and we've talked about this before, but this is another one of those examples of doing what's best for me, not doing what's best for the child. So I've said in the past, uh, it's kind of like baseball tie goes to the runner. If, if it's like, you know, we're not quite sure we're going to give it to the kid. But then, but then there's cases where it's obviously going to be something in the kid's favor. And we're going to we're going to show the benefit to the kid. We're going to give the benefit to the kid, not say, well, you know, it, let's let's uh, let's benefit mom. Let's benefit dad simply because it would make their lives easier in their head. Right. If it seems like it's going to make your life easier, there's a good chance that it, that it might not. That this might be something that blows up in your head, in, in your face down the road. And, uh, you know, one of the things that we like to say is pain now, pain later. Yeah. You want to avoid temporary pain to help yourself feel better about your circumstances. And, 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 and you think that there's not something down the road. And then when you involve another person with it, well, now you're, you're just creating more of a mess more of a problem. I mean, this woman said that she thought about ending her life. I mean, what what do you feel like as a parent? I mean, say you find this out later on. I mean, some in some cases there's no note, but what do, how do you feel when you find out that you've damaged your child to the point where they can't their mind is not strong enough to handle and manage the difficulties of everyday life. Life is hard. Life is really, really hard at times. And we've said before, parents' number one job is to strengthen the mind's offense and defense. I mean, it's real straightforward. Like I want our kids to be able to, to think, to be aggressive, to go after what they want, and believe they can do it. But then on the on the other hand, I want them to be able to hear slights, insults, negative things, or even get negative thoughts that just come in, come to their head and be like, nah, not for me. I'm not worried about that. 
that's your that's that's literally your only job like <laughs> i mean there's, yeah. there's other jobs but yeah anyway it is and i think though that parents are just people at the end of the day and there's no like manual like that you get in the hospital like as soon as you have a kid like here's how you instantly deal with all of your shit and become a great parent i mean it's it's a it's a journey and i think for some people it's it's easier to have that mindset than it is for others. This is a little bit different because this is, sounds like it was deliberate. And the mom was like deliberately choosing to undermine her kid's self-esteem. Wait, I, I'm, I'm sorry, can I, this, this might sound um, insensitive. <laughs> <laughs> I, tend, I tend to say things that sound insensitive, or at least I've, I'm told by some people. Um, yeah, man. You know, the thing is, grown people who make decisions to behave a certain way, that decision is on purpose. Like when, and then when you carry out the activity, the function, the, the behavior, and you do it one day, and then you do it another day, and then you do it another day, that is intentional. Just because someone, just because this woman had a whole formulaic plan that she thought was going to yield some great results for her. I mean, it, it makes this story sound like even worse, but the reality is this is literally no different from, I don't know, like anything else. As far as I'm concerned, people make, make, make choices and they know what they're doing. Like they know, you know, like we, we, they, you just know. So I, I'm, you know, I, I'm, I don't know if this is that different. Anyway, so yeah, I, 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 that might sound insensitive, but I just, I, I believe that yes, there is, it's like, oh, there's no manual. Sure, there is no manual, but there are literally millions of other examples around you. There are books, uh, books have been written on this for forever. Uh, the Bible's a great one, um, talks about how to be a good parent. If you don't, if you're not into the Bible, there's other books for you and the decision to not read, the decision to not educate yourself is also an intentional decision as far as I'm concerned. And, and failing to make the choice to do what you need to do to get the job done is no different than like saying, I'm gonna like decide not to take care of my family or I'm going to, you know, like, like who's, you know, like, oh, they were, that's how their parent was when they, when they grew up, their parent left them. And, and so they did the same. It's like, no, you, you are a grown, fully formed person who gets to choose what you're going to do with your life. And we are not going, I'm not making excuses for anybody. I like my dad did a lot of that with my mom. Hey, sorry if y'all, if y'all are watching, my parents don't watch, don't watch uh, our podcast, <laughs> which, you know, it's too bad because there's some good stuff. I say a lot of good things about y'all. So if y'all got on here on this day and you heard something uh, you don't like, well, sorry. Um, but the thing is, my dad did a lot of apologizing for my mom when we were growing up. Uh, my mom, you know, it's like she grew up on the south side of Chicago. Her life was really hard. And I got to tell you, I, I visited her family a couple of times and I hated it. It was hell. Like the, 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 the existence, the, the lives that these people lived, I couldn't even understand how people live this way. It was, you know, when you say hood, it, it doesn't really even begin to describe what it was. It's people strung out on drugs, laying outside of the building that they live in. It's people drunk everywhere. It's, it's, um, it's people literally like getting murdered, like not that far away. I didn't, I didn't see it or hear about it, but I, I have friends who lived in that same area and told me stories and it's, it's terror. It's, it's terrifying and, and it's, it's unnerving to be around. And then, so when you have a family that you're trying to raise in that environment, um, stress and tensions rise and it's, and it, and it comes out in the form of, behavior that's that's not beneficial to the growth of a child but again at some point you move on from being a child and you become an adult and then you get to decide do I want to continue to to pass that behavior on or not and and that is a decision and, that, and those behaviors are, are choices and I and that's 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 where I am on it but you know yeah and I wasn't saying it to defend this in any way I was just you know, saying that this 
I, I think there's like a scale of how intentional a behavior is. And this seemed like it was, you know, very premeditated um, was the point I was trying to make. But yeah, I think um, I definitely, I'm shocked at a lot of the decisions that my parents made. I mean, it wasn't, um, you know, when I think about the decisions that they made around building a relationship with me and communicating with me and letting them know, letting me know who they were as people, like there was none of that. Like my family was very, um, closed in that regard. There was no like communication. There was no conversation. Like I didn't know who my parents were as people, like what they believed in. We didn't do fun stuff together, like to, to bond and to, you know, to create a strong family unit. There was a lot of conflict and, and fighting. And, you know, when I look back at that now, like that is, it's hard to believe that that just was the case for so many years because like when I think about, you know, our family and our kids, like it's just not acceptable. You know, it's not acceptable to to make your kids feel so isolated and so unloved and how when they, they don't have anyone to turn to. Like, you know, there's so much that shapes who you are as an adult that happens when you're a kid and like, it's, it's, you know, I see it as being like irresponsible to not try and invest in your kids and build into them and get to know them as people and have them get to know you as people. And, you know, that's where you learn how to build relationships for the rest of your life. So I feel like my parents really missed on that. Like they didn't, they didn't set a good example of what a marriage should be um, and what a family should be to a, you know, for a lot, in a lot of ways. Yeah. I mean, and, and you know, that's a, that's, I think setting an example for what a marriage should be is, is definitely tough. I mean, you know, talk about not having good examples. Uh, that one's just, if you didn't have a good example before, there's a lot of, there's a lot of books on that and, and that's a lot of work. And I think that, uh, even more so today than than before, it's harder because everything's more expensive. Everything just seems harder. Everything's more complicated, even though we've got so much more technology and stuff to just make our lives easier. So and to a certain extent, there's just this overload of ideas and concepts. I mean, y'all, we could read reddit stories for years and 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 there would be some little kind of tweak on a viewpoint that that like you know maybe i should consider or maybe i shouldn't and it's like it it can be difficult so i i think that's um that's a hard one and you know i think my you know my parents got divorced uh it was after i left the home but you know, I think they did their best to to show us, you know, this kind of love that they have for for each other. My dad was better at it, um, but it was like he's modeling this kind of biblical type of love. My dad was a preacher, y'all, so I, you know, you'll hear me talk about this, you know, every now and then. Um, and and so I, even though they didn't work, it didn't work out. Uh, I saw what it looked like f for the effort to be made, the effort to not be yelling at each other, like in front of us, like, you know, there was never like cr these crazy moments where things were getting thrown. I mean, my mom threw stuff at me, but I <laughs> threw a fork at me, she threw a, threw a spray starch can at me. Uh, she threw some stuff at me, but she, she had a terrible aim, so never, never landed. <laughs> But I never saw my parents doing that. And so that was a concerted effort on my dad's part. And that's hard to do because, you know, especially when you're dealing with someone who, you know, might be behaving a little unreasonable. I'm not taking sides also because I'm sure my dad 
step into a lot of problems that unnecessarily. Okay, Jude, what are you what are you trying to say right now? Jude's trying to get into the fridge right now. Yeah, yeah, you are. He's like he's like, hurry up, hurry this up. Okay, so uh, yeah, so you know, it's a, that's a that's a bit of a bummer to start, but like I think that you know this is this is life, and everything's not all sunshine and rainbows and puppy dogs or kittens if that's your thing. Uh, yeah, and I think most people probably have something that they would answer yes to to that question. There's something in everyone's background that they wish their parents had done differently, you know. Yeah, but that's not exactly the question, though. I mean, I feel like yeah, is there something you wish your parents had done differently? Is versus shocked and like your parent apparently? I'll tell you one some like real quick story. Uh, this shocked me at the time, but I can't be shocked anymore. Uh, I had some chocolate covered raisins and they were uh delicious i got them from the store i think i bought them myself and i, I go to get the chocolate covered raisins and they're gone and i'm like who ate my chocolate covered raisins <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm asking people i'm asking them like who ate the chocolate covered raisins and then somehow i find out it was my youngest brother lenard and I was like, Lenard, are you serious, dude? Like, why would you do that? Like, that's just really out of bounds. It's like, horrible. Horrible. <laughs> like, why would you? Why would you do this to me? And then he said, "Well, Mama offered me some," and I was like, "What?" Yeah, Mama offered offered them to me. So, here's what actually happened. My mom saw that I had chocolate covered raisins and rather than just uh, eat them and do something horrible like eating my chocolate covered raisins, she decided she was going to enlist my youngest brother as an accomplice <laughs> and then leave him literally like with the empty bag of like chocolate covered raisins and, and just drop the blame on him. It's like, and, and then like, and so now I'm talking to her and I'm, I don't know, maybe 13, 14 and I'm like, why would you, why would you why would you use your child to take from another one of your children? What a weird thing to do. Like that was weird. Like So she didn't take them and then offer them to him? She 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 so she took them and offered them to him so that she could then create the opportunity for her to consume them and like use him as the scapegoat essentially. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Also my mom uh Man, I really hope she's not watching this. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> my mom uh, opened up credit cards in my name and uh, destroyed my credit. Uh, I found out I found out as a rookie with the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, that was tough. Uh, we were going through the, you know, the whole thing of, hey, watch out for yourselves. Look, you know, people will take advantage of you and we're going to get a credit report for you guys if you want it. And so we get the free credit report. There's this document that comes. Everybody gets a little envelope. And I opened mine up and it's like disaster, like terror. Like, I, I mean, it was like full on assault. It looked That's like- That's pretty messed up. It was like- to be it, fair. Yeah, it was, it was like, it was just, like my dad has the same name as me. Like I'm, I'm a junior. So it was like, it was, it was like ident identity theft light. <laughs> and, uh, and, I, and I'm like, what, I can't even do anything about this. I can't even report fraud because the result is- Your mom goes to jail. Parent goes to jail. <laughs> So I'm like forced to just like eat it. And, and I mean, y'all, so interest rates are insane now, but like back then, you know, I'm an NFL player getting a loan on a vehicle and the best I could do was 17 and a half percent, like on wow. a, on a vehicle loan. Like, or, like, I mean, and I, and I remember talking to my mom about it and she was like, I paid the money off. What's, I don't see what the big deal is. I'm like, yeah, you were delinquent. <laughs> in the payments and then my credit was ruined and then you paid it off it doesn't matter now it's on the record yeah I, and it's fraud and that too you, you stole my identity yeah um <laughs> really hope i you know i might start this video out by saying i'm not gonna say my mom's name out loud <laughs> uh do not watch this video this will upset <laughs> you but I, but it's all forgiven. Everything's good. We're we're good. We've we've moved past it. It's water on the bridge. My credit is fantastic. It took forever, but it's it's great. <laughs> <laughs>
everything's fine. Everything's <laughs> fine. <laughs> everything's fine. Uh, yeah, but I, I suspect there are people out there who who actually, you know, are not who who would say, you know, look, my parents could they've done some things different, sure, but like, am I shocked that they did something? No, I, I'm, I'm no shocks here. But yeah, I, I've got some shocks. I've got some things. That one, we took a, a while talking about that one, but we hey, we did, we did. But it's okay because uh, if if y'all are here for the conversation, we're here to deliver it. Jude's having fun. Jude is having fun. He enjoyed he's, that one. He's got food all over his face, but I feel like uh, you know we should move in the interest of time. You're gonna pass that over to me. Yes. I'm gonna read this next one. These iPads are heavy, built built tough. Okay. All right. I like this story a lot. Scolding another child. What would be the appropriate way to respond here? Earlier today, Sally and I were at our local park's water play event, enjoying the vibrant splash of the slip and slide. But a familiar shadow soon loomed. An older girl who has a history of being overly handsy began attaching herself to my toddler. This wasn't our first rodeo with her. She was the same child who had, who had given Sally a hard time at the library a few months back. Dun, dun, dun. Despite <laughs> Sally's pronounced no thank yous and evident discomfort, the girl persisted with her intrusive behavior. I started with gentle interventions like Sally prefers to play alone right now. But as the girl's actions grew more aggressive, I felt the need to be more direct. To my surprise and dismay, the girl's mother stood nearby, only occasionally chiming in with a half-hearted rebuke. This experience left me in a quandary. Was I too passive? Should I have directly confronted the mother or shifted Sally to another play spot? Although, Jude, right? Although it would have seemed like a penalty for my daughter who was only there to have fun. Later, when my husband recognized the girl from a video I showed him, it solidified our concerns. Chatting with other parents, it turns out our ordeal isn't unique. Many faced similar challenges with this child, sparking discussions on whether a community meeting on playground etiquette is needed. We all want a safe and enjoyable environment for our kids. With the likelihood of crossing paths with this duo again, I'm pondering my next move. How do we ensure the safety and comfort of our children while also addressing concerns head on? <laughs> <laughs> wow, you really uh, you really got into that one. I got to tell you, I mean, this one. Yeah, I, I'm you know, look, y'all, there's a master class LeVar, LeVar Burton puts mm -hmm. on from Reading Rainbow. Uh, he teaches uh, storytelling. I, I've been watching it and uh, it's it's fun. I like telling stories. <laughs> this is a great story. Uh, yeah, would you like to begin? How, like, how do we ensure the safety and comfort of our children while also addressing concerns head on? I mean, what, what would you do? I mean, you already know what I'm what, what I'm going to say, but yeah, yeah, I mean, I think the community meeting is going to be a giant waste of time. Um, you know, these people probably aren't going to go to the meeting, and it sounds like this is a problem that has gotten worse and worse because nobody has said anything to the parent or if they have maybe the parent just doesn't care but like it seems like a lot of people that just don't really want to say anything because nobody wants to have the conflict um so i think it's partially that and then it's like a discipline issue with the kid i mean if your kid is like acting out and bothering other kids you need to correct that as a parent so mm. The community meeting isn't going to do anything. Somebody needs to go up and talk to the mom or the dad and, you know, have a direct conversation with them and figure it out. Um, and then if that doesn't work, then I guess you, the kid is going to have to be told by either the parent or the child to back off or both. Yeah, well, yeah, this child is two and a half. So, okay, so um, probably the parent. So maybe in a few years, but, but, you know, also the child should be old enough to be able to at least, I mean, then she did say, she, she said, said, no, thank yeah, you. she said, no, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, all right. So, hmm. yeah, I, I agree. I think that for me, so obviously we take our child to places where other kids play and I, boy, sometimes I, I'm just looking around and like, mm, what is happening here? This is, this is like a nightmare. Like, okay. Uh, and and I just kind of treat those moments like I treat every other moment. Like what I'm going through my head, like, what would I do? What am I going to do if this kid who's acting like a feral animal run, who shouldn't even be in the baby play area of this place anyway, right? He's too old to even be in here. There's a sign that's huge and it's for parents to be able to read because the kid obviously can't read. He's too young too old to be in here, too big to be in here. And he's running around like, like some, you know, animal um, with no training. And honestly, I shouldn't even say that because he's running around having fun like a kid. But, you know, he's also being a little disrespectful. And it's like, what am I going to do if he runs into my kid, runs him over, knocks him down or whatever? Number one, I'm not going to overreact by, about like my kid getting knocked over, right? He's going to fall. These things are going to happen all the time. I kind of enjoy it when he falls and hits his head on the ground. I kind of like, you know, not like enjoy it, like, you know, but it's fun because I get to watch him recognize that he took a hit and then also recognize that it didn't really matter. Yeah. Like, to recover. He just shakes it off. It's like, uh, whatever. And, and, and that's great. Cause like, that's what we are teaching him. So if he falls down and instead of saying, Oh no, what is, or Jude, are you okay? It's like, Hey, that was so fun. And he's like, ha, 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 ha. and it's just like, <laughs> It's great. Like he fell down today in a pretty spectacular new way because he he learned how. Well, he discovered the broom. Was it? He fell down with the broom, right? Uh, hmm. No, it wasn't the, he, the what was broom. It? Okay, he fell down with something. He he was holding something. He fell down, and he toppled over backwards. Which usually, when he falls, even when it looks like he's gonna topple over backward and hit his head on the on the ground. He just lands on his butt. And I think that's what most babies do. But to yeah. me as an adult, it's weird to see like, wow, OK, I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> um, but this time he fell down backwards and and like just kind of folded over. And it was and it was like he was a little surprised. And I was like, hmm, what's going to happen here? Oh, I think it was yesterday when he, he was on the mat with. Um, oh, OK, OK. With the I can't remember what he had a ball or something. He had a thing. He had something. He had something. He always has something in his hands. Uh, so yeah, so I, I'm, I'm prepared for him to fall down or get knocked down. That's fine. Uh, but I'm also prepared to say something. So if I observe a child behaving, uh, erratically or in a way where the parent has the responsibility to correct something, I'm going to just like, just be ready. And when it happens, I'm going to say, Hey, I'm not even talking to the kid. I'm talking to the parent. You need to get your kid. You need to get your kid, get him under control, like right now. He's not even supposed to be in here. I don't want to be like the, you know, what's a, I don't know, black man Karen. You know, I don't know what the <laughs> black man Karen. I don't know what <laughs> I don't know what that is. I mean, that's, that's a, a. I think we need to coin that term. I don't think there's a there's a thing. I don't think black men even have the capacity to be a Karen. But like, <laughs> I don't want to be that if that's a thing. <laughs> but I also. I'm not like we all paid money to be at this place and I don't want to have to deal with your your child's behavior. And so, yeah, on that playground, that's a that's a thing. But another thing that I would say is I think we can do a better job of preparing our kid. That's right, Jude. We can do a better job of preparing our kids. Uh yeah, it's got, <laughs> he a, loves that. got a fresh cut of watermelon there. He's excited. <laughs> so the uh, the thing that that I feel like parents might want to consider trying is is being uh, is is teaching your kid to be a little bit more aggressive when when there are uh, intrusions on their you know personal space. Right, the whole. Sally's pronounced no thank yous. I'm sorry, but our kid is not going to be taught to say no thank you when someone's touching him unwant un in an unwanted way. He's going to be taught to say, get your hands off me. 
and he'll say it and maybe he'll have a British accent when he says it. We don't know how he's going to talk. <laughs> he's not, he's, he's saying some stuff like, dad, dad, mama. But maybe he'll say, get your hands off me. <laughs> wow. You really went there with the, <laughs> the, <laughs> the Charles Dickens Un, British accent. Unhand me, you hooligan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get your hands off me. That is the, that's the response. That's what, what he's supposed to say that's what our kids will say get your hands off of me right now and and like and 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 look them in the eye right like right now jude is actually really good at staring people down he so, is he stares a lot of people down yeah so when the words come you know there people are already intimidated when he's staring at him he's like why is he looking at me like that? <laughs> <laughs> why is his baby staring at me because he doesn't trust you <laughs> <laughs> Or he doesn't like you. Or he doesn't like you. I mean, if he's just staring at you and he's not smiling, like... You're in trouble. You're in trouble. <laughs> you, you've got some work to do to get on Jude's good side. But yeah, no, there's the, the community meetings, all that stuff. Also, this sounds like a really nice neighborhood, by the way. It does. It sounds really nice. I'm like, where do these people live? Can Yeah, can we live in this neighborhood? <laughs> I mean... They got their own park with slip and slide. Right? And, right? Like, come on. Yeah. That's, some, that's nice. Yeah, but it, but this sounds like a, a weird uh, story from an episode of Desperate Housewives. Shout out to Desperate Housewives. <laughs> Love that show. Uh, Mark Kelly, mm -mm -mm. good stuff. <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't know. Is there anything more to say about this? I don't think so. Okay. We're going to move to the next story. All right. Keeping it moving. We got a little quicker on that one. That was good. Yeah, we did. Here we go. <laughs> We're going to get another iPad, y'all. It's a business expense. M, the, the M3, the M3, uh, uh, is it M3? Is that what they're called? The M2? Yeah, Apple Silicon, the next generation M3, I think. Is oh. These things will be coming out soon. and That's a different YouTube channel, but, you know, new iPad, y'all. Let's go. All right. Story number three. Wife always makes things more difficult. This the title could go in quite a lot of directions. Yeah. Um, okay. In the dance of parenthood, my wife and I sometimes move to different rhythms. She's a staunch vegan, while I am not, but we've always respected each other's dietary choices. The challenge arose when she insisted that our baby should also tread the vegan path until they're old enough to decide. This meant the daycare's menu was off the table and we had to pack special meals. Recently, she's taken it a step further, advocating that our baby should consume exactly what we do. So we've transitioned to a whole food vegan diet, just fresh, fresh veggies, no substitutes. I, re I respect her beliefs, but I can't shake the nagging concern about our baby's nutritional needs. And unintentionally, I have nudged towards a lifestyle I didn't choose. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to do this one, but I now feel like a little energized over I it. I think this is a really good one. Um, okay, where to start? So this is, I guess this is not exact, this is not exactly the same situation, but I was a vegetarian my entire life. I was a vegetarian for as long as I can remember when I was a kid. Um, since the age I remember being able to make decisions about food, I did not like meat, I did not eat it, um, I didn't eat fish. I still ate like eggs and cheese, but um, never ate any meat up until the last couple of years. So well into my 30s when we were trying to have a baby. And, you know, we had two miscarriages and at some point along the path, um, we made the decision that, you know, well, Otis did a lot of research and pointed out to me that I was probably malnourished and wasn't getting enough protein. Um, so, you know, I begrudgingly gave it a go of, um, you know, trying to incorporate more animal protein and it's been a slow journey. Um, but between that and giving up alcohol, you know, we then, after having two miscarriages and made those changes, 
got pregnant really you know, got pregnant and, you know, now we have our wonderful son, Jude. I got to just add in a little little something before, because uh, giving up alcohol, the giving up alcohol, meaning giving up alcohol while trying to get pregnant. Obviously, when she was pregnant, she wasn't drinking yes, alcohol. Yes, before, be- be- before being pregnant. Because because of the, the idea is that, you know, well, you're supposed to stop drinking alcohol if you're pregnant. But so many people don't know they're pregnant for like at least four weeks. Yeah. And they're drinking and it's like, oh, I had no idea. And and the reality is every single second of the day that you're pregnant, cells are multiplying and that alcohol is literally creating the potential for mutations. And then the fuel that you're putting in your body is also creating the potential for problems. And there's so little that doctors actually know. I mean, the the, the, the really horrible thing about all this is like when you go through a miscarriage, these people can't tell you anything. They don't know. They have no idea. They have no idea. And and it's like, okay, why don't we start with the obvious stuff, I think. And and you know, maybe if if we behave as if we are we have what we want, then we'll have what we want. And so that and that's where she stopped drinking alcohol. Just want to let let y'all know cuz you know, that that could come off a little <laughs> wonky. <laughs> Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, okay, I've kind of lost my train of thought. You gave up alcohol and, and started eating meat. Started eating meat. And since I've started eating meat, I have noticed a lot of changes. I mean, you know, I was able to carry a healthy child. And, you know, when I was breastfeeding, eating animal protein made a huge difference. Um and, you know, since I've then been eating it regularly, when we went to get pregnant the second time, it happened pretty much instantaneously. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of that had to do with with diet and no alcohol. So that's a very long way of kind of getting to the point of having gone through that experience with seeing in in myself the change that, you know, diet has made and kind of coming to the realization that yeah I was probably like malnourished for most of my life um because I was not somebody that was making sure I was eating you know I would eat you know the the chickpeas and the fake meat and and you know eggs and all that stuff but I wasn't really consciously monitoring how much protein I was having and now that I have more knowledge about it and I I know what I should be having I definitely wasn't having that so I think that um, putting your baby on a vegan diet is not, is not something that, that I would do. I think that it's really important to lay a foundation for a kid to not be a fussy eater. I mean, for them, for their benefit, for their, like, for their nutritional benefit. And also for you. I mean, like if your kid is a fussy eater and doesn't, doesn't eat a lot of things. I mean, I think about my parents when I was like, I'm vegetarian, you know, in the early nineties, it wasn't a thing really. It was just, I was a fussy eater. And like, looking back, like it was probably really difficult for them because, you know, they didn't know what the hell to give me, you know? Mm. Um, And it, you know, created a lot of unhealthy habits and stuff and weird issues around food for me. But um, yeah, I, I think that, I think that the dad who has the instinct that his baby's nutritional needs are not being met is, is right. And he needs to, he needs to fight for getting his kid more variety of food. I mean, if this kid is literally just eating vegetables, like there's no, I mean, there's no milk, there's no cow's milk or I mean, I don't know how old the baby is, but it seems like, I, I don't think that's good. I mean, you know, whatever the kid wants to do when they're older, when they can make an informed decision is fine. But I bel- I think that you should start out giving your kid a variety of food and making sure that they have everything that they they need. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think. Uh, so you, you hear. I, so I look, I I tried the vegan lifestyle uh for six weeks and uh i felt great for like the first three weeks and then just things in my body just started to 
to happen that were so weird. And I was like, okay, this this diet. And I was I was, oh baby Jude, baby Jude, all this talk of food, baby. You're trying to shut you're trying to shut the podcast down early. <laughs> we're almost done. Uh, you know the, the the like my body was responding in a way it was revolting. I mean, I felt low energy. My brain wasn't working the way it normally worked. My memory was terrible. Focus, all that stuff, and. And I just was like, okay, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm like, I'm losing nutrients. But then when you start doing the research, it's, it's just clear that animal protein is literally the best, the best source of protein. Yeah. You can get protein from plants, but like you need a lot, you need 30% more plant protein. Uh, the, the way it, the way it works in your body. And I'm not like a nutritionist. I'm not a scientist. So I'm not going to be able to explain this to you all in a way where it makes sense. I uh, should have some notes on this, but I didn't come prepared, sorry. But the thing is like, even the the whole thing, like with the strongest person, you know, in the world, like it's like the strongest person in the world is a vegan. Like, yeah, this guy has a insane regimen to like make sure that he's able to get everything he needs. And there's still kind of questions around would he be even more highly functional if he actually ate animal protein? Like we, we can't even make that comparison, right? Because a lot of the, the credit he's getting is for the work that he did to get strong. You don't just get like muscles because you eat things. You know, a lot of people just eat things and they gain weight. <laughs> if, you don't, yeah. if you don't do anything. So, so looking at, you know, just it, some of this stuff just seems like common sense to me. But I will say that I have a friend uh, whose sister is a vegan and her husband is a pediatrician and he basically was like, I don't care what you say, you are going to eat some type of animal protein when you're pregnant with our kids. Like, like, and, and, and I was, when I heard that this was before we had our kid long before when I heard that, I was like, man, that's aggressive, but I like it because this guy, this guy knows the science. He's he's done the research, and he sees the difference between kids who, you know, are come from vegans and vegetarians, and kids who come from people who have, you know, a, a well-rounded diet. Like these, the, it's it's like, it's obvious. And sometimes I feel bad, uh, you know, when you get around people with their kids and and they see how big our kid is and how you know, far along he is. And, and there's always, you know, there's a lot of commentary around, well, every kid's different and, and, you know, things happen a certain way and, and you can never, you never know. And, and that's true. There's, everyone's different, but the things that we saw in his development in the womb, outside the womb, the things that, yeah, you're getting, you're we're getting, talking about you, baby Jude. We're talking about you here. Should I, you want to hold my hand? The things that, that we saw, uh, that we've seen with him and with Gemma, like you mentioned the breastfeeding, the, what's the, what are they called? The lactation consultant? This mm -hmm. lactation consultant was dumbstruck by how much milk she, she was producing. It was like she couldn't pump enough milk, but like where he was pulling it while breastfeeding was so much that, that she had to go. She went back to like all the people that she knows in this space. And they were like, yeah, there's no, we've never heard of that. We don't, we don't understand that. And the thing is like, I understand because one, I'm praying for it. Okay. And two, I'm in charge of cooking the meals. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know the macros. The I know the macros. And when, and when the typical, you know, pediatrician recommendation on how much more protein, you know, you should be consuming for your baby. Like when they say that, I'm like, I don't want typical. I, I want exceptional. I want like, what is elite, right? Don't give me average. Let's get like, let's, if they say you need this much more calories and protein and all that, can we double it? Like, what can we do? How can we figure this out? Yeah. And I remember at the same time, my sister who is a vegan, she was breastfeeding her daughter and we would have conversations about like, I would tell her about, you know, this journey that I was going on with food and, you know, trying new things and slowly incorporating more and more. Um, 
And she was asking me all these questions because she was like, I'm just, I'm so tired. I'm exhausted. Like, you know, I'm not feeling great. And, you know, eventually we talked and I got, I was like, look, maybe just try like with, start with eggs, right. You know, start eating eggs. And she was, she, she did. And she noticed a difference. And then she ate some salmon and she noticed more of a difference. And it's like, I don't, she's not fully on board with, um, with going, moving away from being a vegan completely, but she's, she definitely noticed the difference when she started to incorporate those things. And I think she's, you know, slowly doing it more and more. And it's a big, it's a big deal for people that, I mean, it was a big deal for me to do it, um, to overcome like mentally, like, why do I have to eat things that I don't want to eat? You know, I don't like this and I don't want to eat it. But then when you start to see the difference that it makes. And when I, you know, see the difference that it's made in, in our son, it's, it was worth it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and the answer that I always had for like, why, why? Because, um, what I told her was, I would like you to pretend like you are a professional athlete. I, I don't, I don't get, you know, I show up, I want this job as a professional athlete and, and there are certain things about it. Like I need to meet a certain weight requirement. You know how hard it was for me to keep my weight at 260 pounds? It was really, really hard. It's they, a lot of McDonald's. They wanted me, <laughs> they weighed me every week. And it's like, if I'm under weight, I'm in trouble. Like there's a problem, there's an actual problem. So I'm over here like crushing Gatorades before I weigh in, <laughs> like doing everything I can. And and so it's just like, and the, and the reason why they're doing this is because they know that if you're undersized, you're going to get pushed around. And and when it comes to food, it's just fuel. I mean, I want to enjoy my, my food. I, like, I love cooking. I love making good food. I love eating good food. But at the core of what food is, it's fuel. And, and people have a lot of hangups around food, and that's fine. But, you know, in in the case of whether or not you should have your kid on a vegan diet, obviously you can do what you want. Um, you can definitely do what you want, but but I I don't want to hear the excuses that you make down the road because you hear the excuses that people have all the time. I've I, I'm not going to name names of who the kids are, but I've seen kids who who who've grown up and who have parents who are a certain size, and then. The kids are not as big and you look at it's like, well, what are you feeding them? And, and it's like, mm, it's not, yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not the full range. And you're, you're, you're hamstringing those, these kids. Like you're, you're putting them in a tough position. Like every time, you know, a parent feeds a kid goldfish crackers, right? Why? <laughs> you know, like why, why not like, find something else that you could give them like like something like some cheese right like there's there's like all kinds of nutrients in there or i don't know like i mean right now there's a block with salmon on it right now jude eats he crushes salmon he's he loves salmon he loves salmon he eats poke and and it, and it's like it annoys me because i want to eat more of the poke and, and it <laughs> seems like he's eating more than me sometimes <laughs> like this stuff is not cheap he puts sir. it away pretty fast but, but yeah, um, you know, I, I think that as far as this guy feeling like this, this lifestyle is being forced on him, you know, hey, this is, this is the way these things work, right? When we got together, I knew Gemma was vegetarian. I didn't have a plan to make her eat meat, but I knew I wasn't going to become a vegetarian. And, and so the thing is, there's something's always got to give. And my thing is, I'm willing to try anything, but I'm about results. And we tried it your way before, right? We tried it your way. And we can't, we can't claim that it was this thing for sure, but I do know, and we didn't tell this story, but, you know, Gemma had this medical condition where she would feel like she had to pass out. And sometimes she actually would pass out. I would pass out, She yeah. would pass out and she'd feel it beforehand, but sometimes it would just come on out of nowhere. And all these doctors, like they're, they're flummoxed. They're like, oh, we did the blood test. We did this and that, and we can't figure it out. And I, and I was like, I'm just looking at her and I'm like, I'm watching what you eat every day. You barely eat breakfast. You're 
your lunch is toast with <laughs> with peanut butter. Like, I mean, like I'm, you know, <laughs> still love toast and peanut butter. Toast with peanut butter the, the, <laughs> from the last episode, the snack of choice for certain parents at uh, at kids' birthday parties. Toast with peanut butter. That was her lunch, and I'm like, I'm looking at this like, how is how is your body supposed to function with 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 like not enough fuel? It's like putting like diluted gasoline in your car like if you bring your car to me and you're like oh man it's like puttering and it won't move the way it's supposed to i'm like are you putting the right fuel in so i'm looking at this and i was like hey i actually have a, an idea a theory and i'm pretty sure that this is what it is and she wasn't really feeling it but then it all came to a head when she literally passed out in the grocery store and I like I've never seen anything like this in my life. I had to carry her, so we had a big old bat, like shopping cart of groceries. <laughs> <laughs> I had to carry, pick her up off the ground, and carry her out to the car. It looked crazy. Like, what is going on? It's a, it, it's not an empty store. It's a, you know, it's a nice grocery store. People are like, what is happening here? What has he done to her? <laughs> right, I'm carrying her out of the grocery store. I put her in the car. I turn the start the car. You know, run the AC because it's Texas. And I go back in and finish this grocery shopping. <laughs> and I come back and it's like, and then, you know, we get home and I'm like, I'm done with this. Like, I'm, I'm done with this. I, we, I've watched you try it your way. You know, with all due respect, your way is not working. And, and I believe with like 99% certainty <laughs> that it's because of your diet. And if you would just let me make some changes. So there were very small changes to start out, but those small changes led to like, just, okay, now we have enough fuel to not be passing out, to not even like feel like I need to pass out every single day. Not saying that you never have the feeling ever, ever, ever. I don't know, you know, I'm not in your body, but it's- It's rare. It's, it's rare and it was just from that, from that one change so then it's like, okay, we made some small changes. You're not eating nearly as much as I think you should, but now we're past like the starvation level, right? Like that's, and she's not like, you know, she wasn't. I didn't have an eating disorder. She never, she didn't have an eating disorder. <laughs> she's just a vegetarian. <laughs> like, <laughs> which, you know, maybe, maybe that's a, no, I'm joking. It's not, I'm, I'm, hey, vegetarians out there, I'm not <laughs> calling your thing an eating disorder. I'm not saying that. But it does it does compromise you and you do have to eat a lot more food than you realize. They don't tell you that. And even when you feel when you feel full, it doesn't mean you got the nutrients that you needed. So so it's like if you're not counting the nutrients, if you're not paying attention, you could be putting yourself in a position to where you're more compromised when it comes to illnesses. And I know a lot of people say, oh, I'm vegetarian and I never get sick. Like, OK, well, let's just wait until like something actually real happens because when your body needs to tap into like resources for something serious, not a cold, <laughs> <laughs> like, like what happens then? And, and, and so I just, I, I just, and this is speaking from a person who's tried it. Like, I'm not, I'm not like just looking at you and judging. Right. I just, I tried it. And I tried it because a former NFL player, he lost a bunch of weight. He was, you know, he had all these like changes in his life and, and he, he wasn't full vegan. He just ate like meat once a week. And I was like, wow, that's interesting. And then I watched the forks over knives uh, uh, movie, yeah. and, you know, and I was like, oh, we gotta change. I gotta save the world. I gotta save the world. I gotta save the world. I gotta do my part. And, and man, that did me in. So, uh, so I'm not saving the world anymore. <laughs> Well, no, the thing is, I, th I think that there, there are more sustainable ways to go about consuming meat. Like you don't have to eat like, you know, your, you know, 10 times your allotment in meat, right? There are yeah. people who overdo it and that is definitely unhealthy. Um, yes. And then, you know, the processed meats and things like that. But the science is, is ch has changed. I feel like, didn't I? Yes. Jude. Yeah, Jude. Yes. Yes, it's changed. <laughs> I feel like there was a there was like some type of study that recently came out. Yeah, there was. Uh, from was it the WHO? Um, I'm gonna look for this and link to it, y'all. Uh, so there was a study that came out, and this report was like 250 pages. I have not read it because it's 250 pages and the print is small. But the findings were essentially like, hey, you know what, y'all, we were wrong about like meat. <laughs> 
Yeah. We were dead at dead wrong, like dead wrong. And and the thing is, like. <sighs> and also things yeah. like eggs. I mean, eggs got like a really bad rep for a long time yep. about raising cholesterol. Um, cow's milk. All, cow's milk. Yeah. And it, I think it said in the study, like eggs potentially can raise cholesterol, but it's not it's not the kind of cholesterol that you need to be worried mm -hmm. about. Um, it's actually the good stuff, the helpful stuff. And it doesn't cause a, a long-term raise. It's just like a temporary thing. So can't remember exactly the wording around it, but yeah, all the things that, you know, your grandma said you should eat like real dairy and real food, then it's true. It's like completely swung from like the seventies where everyone was eating that to this, you know, whole like vegetarian vegan thing. And now it's like the pendulum is swinging back towards eating a variety of food and protein and including animal protein yeah. too. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people um, have made the mistake of looking around and saying, Oh, we're all like overweight and we're going to blame it on, you know, meat. And it's like, no, blame it on the the all the process the, gar the garbage yeah. that they put in your food this is it's it's there is something different but we're gonna have to just make our own food we're gonna have to be careful and, and pay attention to where it comes from um but yeah it's a it's a it's a thing and i can't imagine there's too many people who who find themselves in these ish in these situations i think for the most part vegans are with vegans and vegetarians or with vegetarians or, you know, something close to it. And mm. I don't know. There's a whole lot of people out there who find themselves. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Let us know in the comments. What yeah. do y'all think? Yeah. We're supposed to be, we're supposed to be prompting you guys to, to, uh, you know, comment, like, subscribe, like, subscribe. We're just having a conversation. Yeah. Here. Honestly, I'm, I'm more concerned about making sure, uh, Jude is, uh, he's, He's over here just eating some more watermelon. I, I see you, baby, just chilling, making a mess. <laughs> uh, yeah, we can talk about this for forever, but yeah. I think it's probably time for Jude to go to bed. And uh, we've, we've had a great conversation. Let us know what you think. Yeah. Thanks for listening, y'all. Oh, also, hey, if you uh, get some thoughts, some things you want to hear us talk about, you know, just curious about what we think. I mean, if you really care, and you want to know. <laughs> If you've got your own stories. Does anyone care what we think? If you have your Maybe own not. if you have your own stories, right? Like, I mean, we're reading these stories, we're finding these stories on Reddit and other places. But if you have stories that, you know, where you're just like, I like I'd like some, you know, outside counsel on this, you know? There's no judgment. Like I'm not I'm not judging you. you no, you wanna, no judgment. You want to feed your kid a vegan diet? Like, I'm fine with my kid being bigger, stronger, faster. Than <laughs> yours. Like, I'm okay with that. Like, <laughs> there's no judgment. Um, I'm like, this. It's fine. No, I'm joking, y'all. Um, everyone has the right to do what they want within, you know, the law, the, the limits of the law. So yes, absolutely. Yeah. Just sharing our experience. Okay, well, uh, this was fun, and uh, thanks for joining us. You guys have an awesome day, right? Yeah, see you next time.